you are welcome to my channel today we'll be treating the topic auxiliary projection and we'll be drawing the auxiliary plan and auxiliary elevation of this block right here this is the front elevation this is the side elevation and this is the plan first thing to do in auxiliary projection is for you to be able to draw the the elevations convert them to isometric so this particular one now the isometric view will look like this like this huh? this way you come down then this one goes this way it goes that way one goes up and goes this way like that and this is connected this way and meeting in the right corner it's connected this way then find the thickness that's thickness like this straight this place and this one comes here this one comes vertically downward then it goes this way and this one comes like this yeah so this is the auxiliary and this is the asymmetric view of this object now to draw the auxiliary projection we have to draw draw the front elevation and plan because we have been asked to draw the auxiliary plan in the on on plane x1 y1 that is perpendicular to this plane which is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal so then we are to also draw the auxiliary elevation on plane x2 y2 which is inclined at 45 degrees to the horizontal that what the implication of that is that your projection will be perpendicular to this plane x2 y2 so first we need to draw the plan and elevation so let us start like this now we can now we can project the side let's project the side Measure the width. The, the question is actually we are actually going to solve the question in a ratio of one to two. The implication of ratio of one to two is that all the dimension will be half. So where we have hundred, we use fifty. Where we have twelve, we use six. Where we have seventy-six, we use as thirty thirty-eight. And so on so all the dimensions will be reduced to a half the only thing that will not be scaled will be the angles so this one is 100 so we're going to measure 50 we're going to measure 50 10 20 30 40 50 and then we also have this thickness which is 12 so we scale it to 6 this is, this is six and on this side this is six then the height if you can see the height from here to here is 76 that's from here to here so half of it will be 38 we measure 38 10 20 30 38 is here now let us leave a space of one one cm in between them and start with the plan to so measure 76 that is 38 then 20 30 38 will be here like that so let us bring out this one first
so at the bottom here is 12 so we measure 6 at the bottom here 6 this is 6 then at the top here is also 6 we measure 6 this is 6 so this one Now we have drawn the elevation and plan, so let us thicken it. It is necessary, but that's what the first person has directed us to do to draw the elevation and plan. So that means the elevation and plan will be in thick line, the outline will be in thick line. Thing will be in thick line. So make everything thick line. And be careful to avoid having double lines. Yes, at the top. Yeah, we have the plan and elevation now so the next thing is to draw a plane x1 y1 at 30 degrees so you can just use your 30 degrees set square you can see this is 30 degrees this angle is 30 degrees so for the auxiliary plan you place set your t square very well let it sit properly so you can you can put a plane here although i don't need this because since already i know that this is 30 degree all i just need to do is to just shift this away and put my other set square on it so that all the lines i'll draw will be perpendicular to this 30 degree because this line is 30 degree so all the projection I will make will be 30 degrees and the projection will be made from all the corners of this of, of the plan of the elevation the front elevation so let us start from this extend everything out all the corners from all the corners so now we can now extend it before we extend it let us draw our x y x1 y1 line you draw parallel line to the the x y y1 line that you, you started with like this so this will be our x1 y1 according to the question if you draw a horizontal line here this will be 30 degrees so you can now extend all the lines Make sure you don't have double line so that your line will be parallel. You have to be very careful so that you don't have double line. Maintain parallel line is very, very important. This drawing 
all this line will be drawn in thin lines not thick lines so that is that we have captured all the corner so what we'll do first next is to label all the corners of this of the asymmetric view let's start from here let's say this is a this is b c let us call this corner d this corner let's call it e this one let's call it f and then let us call this g this one h we leave i and go to j j let's use this as k let this be l and this one m and the bottom here m now there's this corner here too let us label it as o o now you take note that this line going this way and this one going backward they will meet at a point at one corner here that's under e so let us call that place p p again the e coming vertically downward o going this way and k going backward all of them will meet at p so similarly n going backward and b coming downward will meet at let's let's label that place as q let us put it somewhere here q again n going backward and b coming down they will meet at a junction let us call that junction q so we have been able to label all the corners of the of the asymmetric projection of the of the view now the next thing we're going to do is to now transfer that measurement to our diagram we transfer it to our diagram so that will be where we will stop in the first part of this video let us transfer now this is looking in this direction now facing this direction at the top corner here this left corner we have f in the front and a at the back meaning at this corner we have a and f at this corner which is here at the next corner which is here you have only e here we have only e at this point we have d you can see d so here is d and here we have b in the front and c in the front and b at the back so we have b and c now coming to the next level which is here here we have j and at the back of j no there's nothing at the back of j so we have only j here at this corner we have j j here then k at this corner at the back of k that's where we have p you know we said k going backward and o coming to the left will meet at p so that's p so we have k and p at the back we have k and p here now at this corner in the front we have l and at the back we have o we have l and o now at this corner we have m here we have n now to the bottom here we have n and at the back of n going backward and b coming down or they meet at a junction label as q don't forget that so we have n and q at this corner we have n and q then finally at this corner we have h in the front and g at the back so we have h and G so in order not to make our video to be too verbose we'll stop here till the next class thank you very much like the video share it and subscribe to the channel